How's everybody doing? Welcome back to my channel. This week, I'm gonna be covering up this tattoo that my client has on his left arm, and he has been living with this tattoo for the last 10 years, and it is my pleasure to get rid of this tattoo. So with that being said, let's get this day started. Let's go. Nervous, bro, but I, yeah, you're nervous? I, tr I trust you. I trust you. <laughs> what are you nervous back. about? Everything? Everything. <laughs> Who did you dirty, bro? That's what I want to know. Say what? <laughs> Who did you dirty? <laughs> <laughs> A couple guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was... A deep one, bro. Yeah, it was. <sighs> well, it, dude, it's been so long since I have yeah. since I got tattooed. And then, Five like, years, right? Yeah, I mean, this is a this is a big project. It is. How'd you get into that situation? This one? Yeah, bro. I literally so I was 19, like growing up, like my parents, like no tattoos, like very you know traditional. Okay. And you know, I was like. Screw it. Like, I talked to him. They're like, no, don't get any tattoos. I'm like, I'm getting a tattoo. And I literally went on Pinterest and was like, typed in men's half sleeve tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it's, what came up. I was like, let's rock, that one. <laughs> let's rock with it. <laughs> oh, so you took that to the artist. Yeah. And did, I mean, I'm already assuming you didn't do research on the artist, right? No. You just walked in into any tattoo shop? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Not the homie, not the... No, um, no, it wasn't anybody's like basement or garage or anything. It was a, it was a tattoo shop, but it, I was like, you know, mm -hmm. who's available? Hey, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh shit! <laughs> Almost fucked my shit up, bro. Holy shit! I was walking with purpose. That's why. <laughs> Bro, that's, that reminds me of something. So, like, my first job out of college, mm -hmm. um, the same thing happened to me. I was walking back to my desk, and it was a chair on rollers, bro. And it literally, I went to sit down, oh. and the chair moved, and I, like, fell right on my ass, like, oh, in front of, no. like, the whole office, bro. I was like, come on. What they say. They, they just laughed at us. Yeah. That you know of. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what happened after you got this tattoo? Like right after it was done, what what was your first? This one? Yeah, what was your first like impression? Um, so like it, he did it in two sessions. So it was like a two-hour outline, and then it, it, oh, so you had to go back. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, dude. Like I didn't really feel anything. Like it was mm -hmm. like you know I wasn't like stoked about it, and you know just like it was really just one of those things where I don't know if I wanted to be like rebellious and like get you know just get the tattoo mm -hmm. and, and that's it, but. Yeah, it was like, I don't know. I wasn't pumped about it, but, you know, I was like, hell yeah, I've got a, <laughs> I've got a tattoo. Yeah. How old were you? Uh, 19. 19. Yeah. And then the second, the, the compass, and yeah. that was five years ago, you said, right? Yep. Yeah, so I, like I said, I was like, I need to get something else. So, you know, I was thinking about trying to, like, piece together, a, you know, a full sleeve or a half sleeve or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Basically, because, like, I mean, this one didn't really give a chance to flow with anything. Mm -hmm. So... I was just like, you know, something that, you know, <laughs> I don't I, even know, bro. I I just, <laughs> you're trying to come up with something. I got it because, uh... <laughs> right, yeah. And is, is hunting something that a lot of people do in Ohio? Yeah, okay. it's, it's huge, especially where I live. Um, mm -hmm. The county where I live, we always either like the top or the second um, county for the most deer uh -huh. killed in, in the season. Wow. Yeah, I grew up doing it. Um, Probably started when I was like 10 or 11. Mm. So you, you're immune to everything, you know? You, you kind of like everything, all the adrenaline of that. Yeah, oh man, it, it's crazy. <laughs> it's so sick. You know, because I like to bow hunt. Um, uh -huh. So like you have to get within 20 or 30 yards of the deer mm -hmm. and just like being that close to them, it's, it's a crazy experience. Wow. Okay, so here we go. We have the piece here. 
Um, the top area, it is 10 years old. The compass is five years old. This one definitely feels a little bit more scarred. This one, it's, um, it's, it looks like it's easier to cover up. But the good thing is that the concept that I have here is what's gonna help me to cover up this piece easily. Perfect. One thing I do want to point out is that I did not plan this at all. I just placed the stencil where I thought it looked good, but the highlight or the area that has no ink of the compass landed right in between the nose, which that is super dope because that is my highlight of the face. So I'm really happy that that happened. Very, um, very uh, unexpected. And that's definitely going to work out. Uh, I was just more focused on where the tattoo was gonna look better at because at the end of the day It has a whole bunch of contrast a whole bunch of details So I didn't need to place it where it was gonna benefit me, but luckily it landed somewhere where it is gonna benefit me So uh, as far as the trees that I'm gonna be adding here on the background I'm gonna freehand them because I tried finding a good reference, but I did not like any trees I feel like I'm just I memorized a few trees uh, little areas that I really like from every tree and I'm gonna put it all in one by freehanding it on this little corner here okay. Yep, go ahead and check out the placement make sure you like what you see That's dope that's tight, huh? You can already see like the shape of everything. Yeah Bro, that's awesome. That's gonna be crazy. I can't wait <laughs> <laughs> 10 years of looking at <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get started with this tattoo that I have here, and I my approach that, I, that I'm gonna be taking with this piece is I'm gonna start from the bottom to the top, and I'm gonna be working my contrast first. I definitely wanna do that with the bottom area just because we have the compass looking super dark. So by me applying my contrast, it's gonna let me know how bright I can make some areas, and that is definitely uh, a big thing when it comes down to this because the compass it is super dark so we got to use everything that we can to make the bear on the bottom stand out and then as far as the background we got to make sure that it is dark but it, it is not solid black we got to make sure that we get to control our highlights and contrast that way the bear stands out and then the bear on the top stands out the background uh, I am definitely going to be doing trees so the biggest thing that's gonna help me to separate the background and the actual bears is by doing the leaves. And in between the leaves, I'm gonna take advantage of those areas that are uh, open skin to bring them out even more. And that's gonna give you the illusion that the trees are, the sun is going right through it. So those little things, it's not something you plan for, it is just something that you go with the flow with because you don't know where the open skin is gonna benefit you. But the only thing you should know is that you can execute it and you're confident in that. Other than that, everything else is just going to fall into place, you know? Uh, but yeah, I think other than that, I'm going to start on the bottom. And depending on where I see that I need to go deeper into explanation of what I'm doing, I'm going to stop the video and take my time and take you guys through my thought process. <sighs> Ready? Let's get it. Damn, I was very fluent on that one. Not yeah, even going to lie. You I was, crushed it, dude. Uh, <laughs> get started on these trees and I did want to go in depth on how I'm gonna execute the trees because 
there is a lot of little tricks that I'm gonna be doing to make sure that it just doesn't look solid black. Um, Cause that's one of the biggest things here. We wanna make sure that you can uh, register where the trees are at and where the bear starts. So I'm gonna be using my, let's see. As in right now, I'm gonna grab my 14 round liner and with a voltage of a 5.0. And I wanna get the shape of uh, the trees first. So here we go. Since the sun is hitting uh, the trees from behind, uh, all the trees are gonna look like silhouettes. So that's definitely gonna help me out to create more contrast on these trees. And I'm just gonna play around with the texture here on the trunk. Just kinda do a little bit of everything. The scribble technique. I'm not gonna go all the way up just because around this area of the mouth, I'm gonna have a drop shadow of solid black and it's gonna uh, blend in into the trees. So they're gonna, the, the shadow is gonna become the trees. So it's gonna be a smooth uh, transition. All right, I'm gonna move on to the other tree here before doing more details. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch to my seven round liner. And this is where I'm gonna start adding my uh, branches and my leaves to start uh, giving the tree the shape. And with the branches, you know, you can just have fun with them and just, since it is a cover up, I'm following uh, whatever I need to cover up. So, for example, this circle here, I'm gonna make it into a branch. And then from here, I'm gonna stretch it this way, just to distract the eye from that perfect circle because it, it can get a little complicated to cover up if it's um, very um, symmetrical shapes. So I'm gonna go here, go right behind there. Same thing here. Right, now that I have that, I'm gonna start doing the scribble technique by doing, making it look like it has leaves all over the place. By doing the scribble te technique, it allows you to um, do more in less time, less irritation on the skin, and a better shape to the leaves, you know, because you're going all over the place and you're slowly building up the shape of the tree. And like I mentioned earlier, I decided not to grab a specific reference because I knew that I was not gonna necessarily need it. 
because I was gonna go with the flow and figure out where I want the leaves to be at. And right in between the gaps, I'm gonna be adding white highlights and my light grays to uh, uh, give it more of a brighter look. And it's not just solid black across the whole entire thing. <laughs> it's crazy how branches and like little leaves like that just cover up so much. Exactly. Like, it's and it's all about like how you navigate through it. Because if you if I was to do this randomly, and that would also would not look good either. Right. <laughs> they have to be placed uh, with purpose. Damn, that's a good quote right there, huh? Right, exactly. And there you go. That's exactly how I'm gonna keep doing this, uh, the other trees to fill all this gap in here. And at the end, once I'm done, right in between those gaps that I have here, I'm gonna start adding my light grays and my white highlights to give it more dimension to the trees and make it look like the sun is actually behind the trees. And I'm not saying rays are gonna be coming through, but more of uh, little areas that make it look like there's bright light behind it. Let's keep going then. How you feeling? Good, yeah. <laughs> I feel exquisite. I feel great. <laughs> feeling great. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. I'm excited that you guys are here. I'm super happy and I can't wait to start sharing everything with you guys because at the end of this, at the end of this seminar, what I want you guys to be able to do is go back home and start doing some crazy cover-ups, you know what I mean?